My parents were raised Christian, but I wasn't really. Um, I knew that there was God, and I knew that Jesus was his son, and I knew that Christmas was his birthday. And I knew that we should thank God for our food before we eat it, and that was pretty much the extent of my my faith growing up. I lived like any other kid. Um, my faith story really starts in middle school. I switched districts, which was like moving, where I didn't really know anyone at school, and um, I had to start all over. I uh, started with these girls who were in my English class. I tried to, to make friends with them, and I sat with them at lunch for a couple of weeks, and I talked to them and ate my lunch with them, and one day they kind of just said, you know, we never told you you could sit with us, and we don't really want you to sit with us. And I remember grabbing my lunchbox and my backpack and moving over to a, an empty table and just sitting thinking about how I was going to make friends uh, in middle school. And shortly after that, I did meet a girl on my bus. Her name was Jamie. And Jamie was really sweet. She lived in my neighborhood. We didn't have any classes together, but we had some of the same teachers. And she just was kind. I, um, I started to notice Jamie was happier and, and seemed pretty confident. And she often invited me to join her at her church's youth group. And I didn't really know what that was all about, and so I was pretty reluctant. I, I gave her a year's worth of excuses. So from the seventh grade to the eighth grade, I gave her a year's worth of excuses of reasons why I couldn't come with her to youth group. And she had asked me enough times that I decided that it was like, you know what, okay, I'll go. I'll come with you to your youth group. And um, even though I didn't know what to expect, it was a really fun time. We played games and, um, got to listen to a story and then got to talk about the craziness of middle school and then um, I just really enjoyed it. And so the next week I decided I would come back and it was a special, a special event at the middle school youth group, um, not unlike uh, the Christmas parties that we have here for HSM and Rev um, or the end of the year move up weekends and stuff like that. Um, so that night was a special party edition and that night they also introduced the real Jesus to us. They introduced God and, and talked about how much he loves us and how much he wants a relationship with us and how involved he wants to be in our lives. And I had never heard it that way before. I had never realized that was what he was looking for. And so I asked God in middle school to be a part of my life, to look past my sin, past, present, and future, and to, to walk with me. And that was all because of my friend, Jamie, who never stopped inviting me to her middle school youth group. And um, soon after, I started going to Sunday school and um, continued on into the high school youth group, where one evening I met this girl who was planning on coming to my school who hadn't been there yet, but she was at youth group and um, her name was Lauren and she ended up being my very best friend and um, she encouraged me and I grew through high school and was a part of different groups with Lauren and spent weekends and weeks with Lauren um, just, just being buddies and um, to this day she's still one of my very best friends. Um, after high school, Lauren went to um, to Southern California for school and I came up here to Washington where I started all over again. And for some reason, I thought that there were no churches where I was going to college, that I would have to sit in my dorm room by myself with my Bible and pray um, to have a relationship with God. But luckily this is not the way that God works and he uses people instead. And I got connected with the church pretty quickly and um, met this girl named Kate, who had started around the same time I did, and she was with me through um, the stress of school and um, money and even a bad relationship I was in in college um, that ended really poorly. And um, 
After, at the end of college, my senior year, my second semester, I moved here to Vancouver for my student teaching. And luckily I had a friend, her name was Bree, who was my friend in college, and she moved here um, at the same time, and we ended up getting to be roommates. She was older than me and um, had just some more life experience and was super wise. She was there for another, another relationship that I was in that wasn't right for me, and she was also there um, for just stressful times learning how to be an adult. Um, it is just a stressful, crazy thing to have to learn how to do. And I was really appreciative of the time and effort Bree spent with me, helping me learn. And um, here in Vancouver, I did meet some friends uh, through the college ministry here at New Heights Church. They had some small groups going on. And um, a few years into the small groups, I was, um, I was a part of a small group that was meeting at Sherry's by the mall. And one day I, I walked in to have our small group and there was a redheaded girl named Michaela sitting at the table. And um, I met her that night and she was just looking for a place to, to get to know some women, some women from the college group. And she uh, ended up becoming a really great friend. We did a lot of ministry together. We worked a lot with middle school ministry and we got to go to Indonesia together. And, um, and in that time, right before we went to Indonesia, I started battling some depression and, and I didn't know what to call it. And I didn't know what it was, but I just felt crazy. I knew I was believing these lies that nobody wanted to be around me, that my friends were just trying to be nice, but they didn't really care about me and they didn't really like me. Um, and I remember sitting in the New Heights parking lot more than once, just crying and telling Michaela how I felt. And, and through her encouragement and her support, I, I found therapy and um, I was put on some medicine that um, has helped kind of balance me. And, and my depression has gone from, from really, really hard low times to, to feeling okay with who I am. And um, my depression manifests itself um, a lot through relationships. And um, I, find, I found myself having a really hard time um, with my depression in friends getting married, um, friends starting to date and be a part of relationships and then getting married. And, and I would go to weddings and I would be so happy for my friends, for the excitement that was coming, for the lifelong partnership that they had with their new spouse. And I just wanted that so bad, but I felt like I couldn't have it. I felt like God didn't have it for me. And it brought me back into my depression um, and, and that was really hard too. Another big thing that happened in my life that Michaela helped me through was my parents changing faith. Um, they, they chose something other than what we'd grown up with, um, what they had grown up with. And, and it brought me into this deep dive where I spent time on the line, I spent time reading books, I spent time in the Bible, trying to figure out why I believe what I believe and why what my parents believed wasn't what I believed. And, and I remember Michaela coming over to my house that night, the night that I found out that my parents had, had converted to another faith and just she just sat there and listened and I cried to her and she held me and told me that it was going to be okay. And after all of these, these bouts with depression and, and hard things that have happened in my life, um, it finally became my turn to, um, to find that life partner. And, and I now have my very best friend that I'll always have. And all of these friends of mine, Jamie, Lauren, Kate, Bree, Michaela, they were all at my wedding not too long ago. And that's just a testament to know that friends are willing to come from states away and even countries away um, to, to be a part of my life and continue to support and encourage me. And um, 
the Bible says a lot about friendship. Two Proverbs that I think about when I think about friendship. Um, the Bible says that a friend loves at all times. And these friends of mine that I've talked about, that they've all loved me at all times. Even when those terrible depression lies seep into me and say, these people don't love you. These people don't care about you. A friend loves at all times. Another proverb says, a friend sticks closer than a brother. And, and these friends of mine that I've talked about, they, I consider them closer than family. Um, they're, they're like my sisters. And, um, and in the Bible, you look at Jesus even, and he had 12 friends that he did life with. And, and even within those 12 friends, he had three really close friends. I definitely have more than just these friends that I've talked about. I have a lot of friends that I really love and, um, and they impact me in great ways, but I definitely have these, these core friends. Not only is it important for us to have good friends, um, not only are good friends something that God blesses us with and pretty much expects us to have, um, especially after he, he says that people shouldn't be alone. Um, not only is it important to have these friends, it's important to be that friend. You wanna be the person who is supported and supportive, encouraged and encouraging, trusting and trustworthy. That's what God has for us in these friendships. And my life wouldn't be the same if I didn't have these people in my life. And um, we just gotta remember that God has this for us and that the people you surround yourself are the people who are gonna make all the difference.